Hello and welcome to Stan Twitter in podcast form. If you're listening to The Bias Critic, I'm your host Alexa and I'm stoked for today's episode. Cat's already trying to eat the microphone, it's fine. Um, I'm super excited for today's episode. I am going to talk about the one of my favorite albums ever, um, Soul Punk by Patrick Stump. Because Monday, tomorrow for you, um, will be the 10 year anniversary of that album, which is wild. Um, so I thought I would just like kind of chat about it with you. Talk about some like trivia, talk about the album itself, talk about lyrics, you know, whatever, whatever I find interesting. Um, so yeah, let's just jump in um anyways i don't know so let's just talk about the overview first of all um soul punk is the first full-length solo album by patrick it was released october 18th 2011 and Patrick is the sole um, artist on this um, album. He uh, performed all the instruments, obviously all the vocals, um, did all the writing, and the production. Did all that by himself. What a guy. Um, It does feature... um, a few mixing engineers, um, and just, like, audio technicians, um, but other than that, all Patrick, which, um, if you're a Fall Out Boy fan, that shouldn't surprise you, um, Patrick is pretty much made up of music, in fact, in a interview with Fall Out Boy, um, shortly after, sorry, my allergies are really acting up this week so I apologize for all the sniffles and coughs that may happen throughout this episode um but anyways there was an interview with fallout boy shortly after the they came back from hiatus and at one point in the interview Joe makes a makes a joke but it's true I mean I in some form it is true that Patrick Joe says that Patrick is made up of more musical um knowledge than or not knowledge, but he's made up of music more than he is of, I think the way he worded it was, he's made up, his brain is made up of music more than it is made up of brain meat, or something along those lines. Um, it's a great interview, it's hilarious. Uh, it's, they're so funny in that interview, but, uh, yeah, I think that's totally true, though. I mean, obviously it's a joke, but I think Patrick is just a music, musically minded person and I think there are certain people that are like that and yeah I think uh, like I don't know he's just your brain works like that where it just thinks in music some people have like a numerically minded brain some people you know have an art artistic minded brain I think Patrick has a musical minded brain but anyways so yeah his the fact that he is pretty much the sole creator of this album minus a few audio technicians is not surprising but regardless impressive um so let's see here We'll talk about the tour uh, for Soul Punk a little later on. Um, Let's talk about the track listing. So the um, standard edition features 10 songs plus a bonus track. Um, So in uh, title or in track order, it's Explode. This City, Dance Miserable, Spotlight, New Regrets, The Eye and Lie, Run Dry, X Heart, X Fig- Fingers, um, Greed, Everybody Wants Somebody, Alley, 
and coast it's gonna get better and then the uh, bonus track was the this city remix with lupe fiasco um there was a bonus or a deluxe edition which featured uh four more bonus tracks uh the bad side of 25 people never done a good thing when i made you cry and mad at nothing and then there was a third edition which was the itunes release and there was also a which is just another bonus track and it was also featured in the japanese release um which featured the bonus song saturday night again which if you haven't heard that song because it's you can only find it on apparently itunes i was trying i've recorded this like six times already today and i keep getting interrupted so um that's what that's what i'm referring to but uh i kept trying to remember i've been trying to remember like what uh version that this uh song saturday night again was released on and now i finally found it on wikipedia that it was released on itunes but anyways so the only place you can find the song was itunes and you can find it on youtube now so if you haven't seen or if you've seen if you haven't heard this song before definitely go check it out it's an awesome song um it's probably one of my top five on this album um some according to wikipedia some notes in from this track from the track listing uh sec- segment says run dry x heart x fingers contains a hidden message throughout the stenography the message includes the lyrics for cryptozoology which is the hidden track in the song so um the run dry is like eight and a half minutes long but it uh also has a second song in it called cryptozoology um so anyways the this message includes lyrics for cryptozoology but has certain letters capitalized so in the uh lyric booklet is what it's referring to it has taylor swift also used to do this back in the day um where the lyrics would on the lyric booklet there would be random letters capitalized throughout and if you wrote all those ly- those letters down, it spelled out a message. Um, when these letters are put in order, they spell out reg- re- regnum. I don't know what that word is. Something failed. R e a g a n o m i c s. I'm googling that. Um, read out loud. I don't know if it will. Okay, I don't think it will. Reganomics. I'm gonna say that's what it is. I'm an I'm an idiot, so I apologize for all you people out there being like, it's pronounced such and such. Like, I'm sorry, I'm dumb. Um, but I don't know what that means. But sounds cool. <laughs> um, the second notes. Inside of the album's booklet, contained with the lyrics of every song in the standard albums, album are white letters scattered throughout the words. If these letters are put together chrono- chronologically, they form a sort of, quote, message. It reads, fear is killing us, but true love can survive. If we cooperate, we can beat doubt. But first, rebuild trust. Take responsibility. Happiness is still free, though not always apparent when it's right in front of us. So keep calm. It's going to get better. So each of like part of that message is scattered throughout the lyric booklet of each of the songs. So like if I remember correctly, fear is killing us was in explode, but true love can survive was in this city and then so on and so forth. It just little parts of the sentence was was in each of the songs so that's some notes on it um critically um like rating wise it was pretty pretty uh well received 
um i'm seeing only, i'm seeing mostly like eight out of tens a few places give it like unfavorable reviews but for the most part it was given you know three to five stars given a pretty high rating um as far as album goes um obviously um <clears throat> the album is called soul punk because <clears throat> patrick is a fan of both soul music and punk music but because he's a fan of both of those music genres um he um felt he said he never felt like he fit in in either um genres like clicks and uh so that so he just kind of made his own and that's what soul punk is is just a mix of the two genres so that way there is a place for everyone Um, I'm trying to find, I know there was a quote about that, but I pretty much covered it. So, let's talk some more about the track listing here. Here it is. On the themes of the album, Stump expressed that soul punk is less of a cohesive narrative as one piece and more individual pieces that dissect a few themes. The whole, the album as a whole deals with greed, paranoia, and, and how the two, with greed and paranoia, and how the two influence each other. The record also deals a bit with innocence and death. That's not what I was thinking of, but. Let's see. So let's talk a bit about um, my thoughts and um, ratings of this album. Obviously, this is one of my favorite albums. Um, but I thought I would do like my top five songs and maybe like some lyrics from this, those songs that I like. So my top five, I would say number one, is greed um i freaking love that song um it's one of my favorite songs just period i think oh that's a very good picture of patrick sorry <laughs> oh i just i clicked on the genius page and then i uh, i wanted to click on the album web page genius page and i clicked on patrick's page and there was, it was just patrick and i was like oh that, that's a it's a good picture mm -hmm. yep okay anyways <laughs> oh man okay so let's see i would say okay i don't even have to look at the lyrics to know what my favorite song or my favorite lyric from this song is my favorite lyric from this song and i honestly um it's from the second verse. Um, honestly, the whole verse. I've been poor and I've been rich. The first one sung, stung, but the second one itched. The cash is just the rash, with, the rash without the pleasure of the scratch. You know, until you've had yourself a hurricane, you're going to fret every raindrop. That is so iconic. Oh, it's so genius, too. Like, that is a metaphor. Um, that's another thing um that i uh wanted to bring up and that is that patrick described the lyrics of soul punk as 90 percent metaphors which is interesting to me because patrick also wrote uh, the majority of lyrics for fallout boy's first album take this to your grave um which obviously there was quite a gap in time between take this to your grave and soul punk about eight years i think but it's just interesting to me that he says that he i mean obviously if you read the lyrics of soul punk it very is obvious much obviously mostly what did it, what did i say 90 percent, yeah 90 percent metaphors it's interesting because take this to your grave most of the songs that patrick wrote for take this to your grave is not metaphor and is more so just literal 
um of course i'm focused on this so i can't really come up think of anything off the top of my head because i've got all this and it's distracting me from other thoughts but it's just interesting that you know as time you know i'm sure he obviously had to had you know grown as a writer and learned um and especially like writing with pete who is who writes m m the majority of his songs in metaphors so i'm sure he learned from that learned from other uh, writers he was around in between time learned from you know just listening to other music in between time that how to write in metaphors how to think in metaphors and yeah it's just interesting that that change I guess um but it's also funny because since the release of soul punk I think it was around the release of mania uh Patrick, in an interview, said that Pete writes most of the lyrics because he doesn't feel like um, he has anything worth... S he, he doesn't feel like he has anything worth saying in a song or that's important enough to put in a song. So that's just... It's just interesting to me, the, the change in perspective from time to time. Anyways, back to what I was talking about. So my first favorite song on the album is probably Greed. I would say the second favorite is... Um, I'm going to say The Eye and Lie. I feel like that's... For a lot of people, unfortunately, that is a relatable song. Um, and I'd say... It's just a really heartbreaking song, honestly. Like... It's obviously just about a cheating spouse, but God, it's a bop, but it's so good. I would say my favorite lyric in that song has to be in the bridge when he says, when you're sleeping with your lover, but you're living with your wife. I think that just, that sums that song up pretty well. And I think it's just a good line. Um, let's see. My third favorite, I would say, is The Bad Side of 25. I think that's a fun fucking song. Um, I'm trying to think what my favorite lyric would be. I love, like, this first, the first verse especially, but, like, the whole song, it reminds me of, like, a song from, like, Folklore or Evermore by Taylor Swift, like, um trying to think um like kind of like how we talk about champagne problems and like she just wrote in this metaphor about it's cold outside and you gave me your jacket november flush and your flannel cure like this song reminds me of that just like talk talking in like like shakespearean almost um i'm trying to think what my favorite I mean, low-key, my favorite uh, favorite line in this song is, uh, how old will I be when, how old will I be when I try to freeze time and my age degrades until a well-worn line, she looks 18 between you and I, I'm on the bad side at 25, um, but honestly, like, this whole, I love, I love a good metaphor, and just this whole song, this song opens up with, um, you wake to grab your shovel, see your breath, it's made of tar. It's a sub-zero archaeological dig to find that artifact of a car. It's a, it's a night, well, he says, he says it out. So it's a 1992 Corolla with a busted left tail light. But you're always reminded the oil one works right. Like, come on, that's such a good, such a good line. Like, it's, it's an old car and this light is broken, but the oil light works, of course, because it's an old busted ass car. Like, it's just a good descriptor. Like, you can see that in your head. And I love that. I love it when you can just paint a picture like that. Okay, how many have I done? Three? Yes. Okay, so I think I've got to go with the obvious choice here and say Run Dry. Because that is just an iconic song um, about struggling. And I think it, you don't have to associate it with um like 
struggling with drinking if you really if you really any addiction or any again i go back to taylor swift and especially champagne problems um or this is me trying and in the long pond sessions taylor said that you know um she was thinking a lot about addiction and mental health and with the, when she wrote this is me trying and i think the same thing could go for um run dry very different concepts obviously very different songs obviously but also but not different concepts either because again in the long pond sessions with this is me trying taylor was talking about thinking how you know people who are struggling with mental health and addiction you know you don't and how people are like just doing their best to get by and I think the same thing kind of can stand for run dry in just a very different sense if you think about it and you can just apply it to you could really just apply it to any kind of addiction if you really want to think about it that way because if you do I mean I think the bridge in this song really sums it up too and it's just hilarious it's kind of funny too but it's also just good um they say everything in moderation but i'll drink you under the table i'm not just drunk i really think i'm in love with you and then in spoken word okay i really am just drunk like it's funny it's supposed to be humorous but i think in some you can take it seriously you can apply it to someone who's struggling with any kind of addiction just obviously it's a more um like the wording is harder to to apply it to that to something else than say this is me trying or champagne problems by taylor swift Because I definitely, when I first heard Champagne Problems, I mean, I definitely was like, my first thought, and maybe it's just because of things that I've struggled with or in my life or people I've seen struggle with, um, just like, I definitely identified the quote, Champagne Problems as addictions. Um, And obviously, I think she was more going with a Champagne Problems um to be identified as like mental health problems but i think you could say that it does go for addiction and mental health and i think again the same thing could go for run dry i just think the i think lyrically it's a little bit more literal anyways um i'll say for my fifth favorite or i'm not putting these in any particular order these are just my top five i love every single one of these songs um we'll say saturday night again again if you don't know this song if you haven't heard it before please go listen to it it's on youtube um it's a really good song (laughs) i don't know how to tell you this but it's just a really good song um Let's see, what would my favorite line in this song be? Um, Again, I'm a sucker for a good bridge, so let's just read this one here. She's got your number and you've got her scent. She left it on your collar, but you don't know where she went. It's the ghost of a good time you carry around, a little artificial like the confidence you found. Um, so obviously this is just about, like, this song is really just about a one night stand, kind of, but it's also, like, uh, a one night stand because you are self-conscious, self, like, not confident in yourself, and so you're, so you go out, you have, you drink some liquid courage, and then, bam, there's your lady for the night. Mhm. Such a good song though. <laughs> All right. Well, so that's that's 
some lyrical breakdowns for you. So let's talk about the tour a little bit. Um, he toured twice for this album. Um, uh, he was the opening act for Bruno Mars and Janelle Monae's tour. Uh, he did four shows for that. And then he did a headlining tour from August to September in 2011. He did uh, Lollapalooza in Chicago and Fuji Rock Festival in Japan. And then he opened for Panic at the Disco that fall for a month. And headlined a couple uh, promotional events, obviously, and did some performances on a couple TV shows. Um, the, um, can we just talk about, like, the look, the aesthetic of this album? Um, obviously, right around this time, Patrick um, obviously bleached his hair, he lost a ton of weight, which, uh, is neither here nor there, Patrick is, Patrick's beautiful no matter what, <laughs> um, I just saw, I just saw a Tumblr post the other day that was so fucking funny, it was like, in all caps, like, if you ever fat shamed Patrick Stump, if you ever went to a soul punk show to boo him, if you ever said that he was faking nice t to his fans for for fame, then, and then in, in lowercase letters, please don't. Patrick Stump is an angel and he does not deserve hate or something like that. And all I was like, did Pete Wentz write this? Um, anyways. So yeah, he bleached his hair, he was wearing sparkly suits, like, it was a whole ass look. And, um, it's funny because obviously there was just like this boost, like this huge boost in confidence from him, or at least a feign of confidence because pre hiatus Fall Out Boy versus Soul Punk era Patrick are like completely two completely different people like if you didn't know any better if you put a picture of Patrick in Foley Adu era and then a picture next to a picture of soul punk era you'd be like this is not the same person like you just if you just look at like they don't look the same obviously and they don't they don't carry themselves the same way but it's the same person and it's just it's crazy it's awesome obviously it's great Makes me very happy to see that he got, he gained some confidence in his work and himself and his talent. Um, but it's just crazy. Um, but anyways, it's funny because in a interview um, around the release of Mania, they brought up the interviewer, um, I believe this was for Pop Buzz, if I remember correctly. Um, the interviewer brought up soul punk because it has just become this has this kind of cult following within the fandom of fallout boy and so the, the interviewer brought that up and like asked him like asked patrick like what do you how do you look at that time in your life now and he kind of laughed and he said something along the lines of, you know, it's kind of crazy to look back on because I bleached my hair and I wore all these crazy outfits and I just look at those, I look at pictures and stuff and performances from, from that time in my life and I just think, who, who was that guy? Like, I just woke up one day and decided to wear sparkly suits and bleach my hair. Like, I, that was just like a whole other character. And it's true. It's funny, but it's funny to uh, hear what he thinks about that time now, because I mean, it was just so out of left field for him. Um, 
or at least for what the, the fans would have possibly expected from him. But, um, yeah, it's interesting. I wonder, I wonder, makes me wonder, like, what inspired the, the aesthetic of this album and, like, his, himself during that time. If it was, like, I don't know. It just is curious. I'm curious what inspired the the aesthetic of the the thing. Um I'm trying to see if there's anything else I want to bring to talk about. I think I covered a lot of the stuff. So Yeah. Yeah, I think that's about it. So, yeah. I'm super... I'm definitely going to be listening to Soul Punk all day tomorrow. And I suggest you do as well. Um, anyways, I'm probably going to... I don't know what I'm going to do now. I see uh, on here on a YouTube suggestion, Soul, Soul Punk era cute moments. So, I'm probably going to go watch that now just to... To fill fill the the void. <laughs> Anyways, I don't know. I'm just rambling now. Um, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, I I know I did. Again, I love talking about this album. It is my favorite album. More people need to appreciate this album because it is phenomenal. So if you haven't listened to it in a while or at all, go check it out. Go revisit it. It's definitely worth it. Um. And, yeah, if you want, you can, you know what, actually, you know what you should do, um, should get on the, the, the Twitter, or the Instagrams, or the Facebooks, or the TikToks, if you prefer, and tell me your favorite soul punk song, or Truant Wave, if you're into that, I love Truant Wave, um, my favorite truant wave song is obviously cute girls um but yeah should let me know what your favorite soul punk song is if you need a reminder i am on facebook instagram and tiktok at the biased critic and i'm on twitter at critic biased you can also find my personal social medias in the sh show description um Anyways, I hope you have a fabulous week. Go enjoy yourself some soul punk. I know I am. Um, happy anniversary, Patrick. We love you. And by we, I mean me. And people listening, I hope. As you should. Anyways, happy happy anniversary, Patrick. Um. Anyways, I will talk to you guys next Sunday. <gasps> uh, bye!